John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum is the newest film in the John Wick franchise, and this movie is once again directed by Chad Stahelski. This film takes place almost immediately after the events of Chapter 2, and follows a now excommunicated John Wick who has a $14 million bounty on his head. If you're someone who has been following my channel for some time now, you would probably know that I'm a very big fan of the John Wick series. The first John Wick was a huge surprise that, in my opinion, gave the action genre the shot in the arm that it needed and helped contribute to kind of changing the way that people approach making action movies. Then in 2017, they released John Wick Chapter 2, which somehow managed to not only maintain but even improve on some of the action from the first film, but it also continued to develop and build on this very intricate assassin world that was established in the first film. And I loved how that film ended. John Wick, the most dangerous assassin in the world, is on the run from pretty much everybody. And although we did see pieces of that in the second film, I like the idea that we get to see assassins in this movie who didn't really feel that it was worth their time to risk their lives in hunting John Wick, but now that there's a 14 million dollar bounty on his head, they decide that it's probably worth it to step out of the shadows. Something that I've enjoyed about these films, and it's something that continues with chapter 3, but as John's life becomes increasingly more complicated, so does the plot of these films. With the first movie, you had just this brilliantly simple question of, what if you killed the dog of the most dangerous man in the world? Then, as I said in the second film, we get to see a closer examination of this assassin world and its inner workings. And Parabellum is no exception to this rule. This film shows us areas of this universe that we have never seen before. It alludes to what John's life was before we see him in the first film, and we are introduced to some people from his past, such as Sophia, who's portrayed by Halle Berry. Now, in the past, I have found Halle Berry's involvement in these spy-like movies to be pretty disappointing. I didn't really find her role in Kingsman 2 to be very compelling, and I think it goes without saying that Die Another Day is borderline unwatchable. But I've got to say, I thought she was terrific in this film. She brings such a raw physicality to this performance, and if you've seen any of the behind-the-scenes training that she did for this movie, you can just see how committed she is to bringing her character to life. Her character has this really fun element to her of being an owner of these massive dogs, and given this franchise's history with dogs, I thought it was really satisfying to see her, John Wick, and these two dogs just absolutely tear through henchmen. And although this is something that John Wick is able to do relatively easily, I never feel in this movie or in any of the other films that John Wick is invincible. He gets the shit beat out of him in this movie. And as I said, this film introduces characters who in some ways are John Wick's equal. In fact, a lot of them are big fans of John Wick, and in the middle of their fight, they're like, hey man, big fan, love your work, and then they'll continue fighting. I thought that that was a really fun element of this movie. But I thoroughly enjoyed the clear distinction of the skill level of some of the people that he fights in this movie. Some people you almost feel bad of because of how quickly he takes them out, but then there are others who are able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for a considerable amount of time. And because John is now excommunicado, he doesn't really have this endless supply of guns and resources at his disposal. So in a lot of these fight scenes, he has to use the environment around him in order to survive. An example of this would be a scene early on that takes place in a library in which John Wick is grabbing books off the shelf. It actually makes for a really funny and a really badass scene. In fact, this movie on the whole is really badass, so much so that I made a chart to illustrate how badass it is. That's, um... That's pretty badass. But seriously, this film has some crazy action sequences, so much more so in this movie, but this film is surprisingly violent. There were a number of scenes in this movie where my theater collectively was like, oh my god. Now, there were some issues that I have with this film, but they mostly revolve around this film's narrative, because as is common with a lot of John Wick movies, the action and the cinematography of these films, they've got that down pat, but where this film falters the most for myself 
itself is in its story. For one, this movie introduces this character who's known as the Adjudicator, and I never really felt that her character worked at really any point in this film. I'm not sure exactly what they were going for with this character. I didn't find them threatening or intimidating, and I didn't think that the performance of this character was particularly strong. Secondly, and I feel this is my biggest issue with John Wick Chapter 3, but one of my favorite elements about this series is how it shows us this underground assassin world. Seeing how everything works, seeing what the rules are, I think that that's what distinguishes these films from being like Jason Bourne or James Bond or even the Kingsman movies. But throughout this film, I felt like there were a lot of ways that John is able to subvert the rules of this universe to his favor, and I felt like because of that, the stakes of this film felt smaller. There's actually a line in this movie in which Winston says a 14 million dollar bounty on his head and everybody wants a piece of it. I'd say the odds are about even. And I think the concept of having the deadliest assassin in the world against everybody is really interesting, but I feel that there are some cop-outs that are implemented in this film that as far as I'm aware are not really established well in prior films, and more often times than not come off as this deus ex machina. Now I could be totally off base with this, they could actually allude to these elements earlier in the other films in this series, but as far as I'm aware they don't. And so these elements just kind of feel a little cheap and they feel like an easy way out for John Wick. However, overall, John Wick Chapter 3 still, as expected, delivers on being a high octane and just kick ass action movie. Keanu Reeves, Halle Berry, and others deliver such a wonderful physical performance and their effort is truly noticeable. And although this movie does have some narrative elements that I feel do fall a bit short, John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum is still incredibly enjoyable and results in being a satisfying sequel to what is become a really impressive series. So did you guys see John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum? What did you think about it? Leave your thoughts and opinions down below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, you can click on the link down below and subscribe to my channel to see more movie reviews and movie related things. Guys, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.